Hello once again, I'm Cosmic, and the time has come to review Massive Chalice. The game is a turn-based strategy developed by Double Fine that was kickstarted back in 2013 and hit Steam's early access program in November of the following year. After a few pushed back release dates, the game has finally released. Double Fine's Kickstarter projects have been somewhat of a letdown, particularly with Broken Age, and have previously caused some controversy with the use and movement of funds between the projects. Massive Chalice is a turn-based strategy game that incorporates RPG elements. The game puts you in the role of an immortal ruler created by a giant magical chalice. The chalice itself houses two magical, seemingly immortal beings that act as your advisors. It's very black and white-esque. In fact, I have long deduced that even before the Kickstarter fiascos, Tim Schafer and Peter Molyneux were cut from the same cloth. In fact, Massive Chalice itself looks from an aesthetical standpoint like the bastard child of Molyneux's goddess. It's an art style that I certainly took a dislike to very easily. It's crude and looks almost cheap in some places. It's a style of art that this particular iteration of it does not complement the game in any way. It's setting or story. It detracts in most cases from what little immersion there is to have. And it's just overall a very poor choice in the aesthetic. Now, like I said, you play an immortal ruler of a land and you're essentially tasked with defending your nation against the Cadence, a mysterious magical force that surrounds the kingdom and produces monsters to invade your lands. The nation is divided into regions that will be attacked if the Cadence goes unchecked there or you lose battles against the Cadence in a region, they will take over after a time and the Providence will be lost for good. The game takes place over 300 years, in which you must defend your land for that time to give the magical chalice time to charge its magical energy to disperse the cadence for good. Massive Chalice borrows from the popularity of the Game of Thrones by putting in bloodline houses. Only people of special bloodlines can fight the cadence and withstand their attacks. These bloodlines come in the form of houses, each with their own name, banner, motto and castle name. Houses are completely cosmetic and at the start of the game you're able to choose five to be your vanguard at the very start. It's a nice little aesthetical feature that tries to make you care about your characters. The problem is, it doesn't work. Because you progress through the game in years, passing 10 years is nothing, meaning that your characters die often just from old age. In fact, characters die so much that unlike a game like XCOM Enemy Unknown where you really care when someone dies because you've spent a lot of time investing in their abilities and their progression, in Massive Chalice, the game's time progression and lack of character customization means that you become numb to your characters. It was to the point that I did not care to learn their names and solely based their usefulness on their age, level and stats. The game features permadeath. Now permadeath by its nature is only an impactful mechanic if you care about the actual death. Massive Chalice's core design almost forces you not to care about your units. Because time passes so quickly, it means that characters never really level up to a significant point, so they never become irreplaceable. In fact, the game design makes units become as meaningful as pawns on a chessboard. While they are very useful, but they're also highly expendable, and you don't put as much stock in them as you would the other pieces of a chess game. Ruling your nation is very simplistic, and it keeps the focus on making sure you have enough babies being born to provide the soldiers for the coming years. It's a case of building castles to house bloodlines to produce children, building the occasional building that helps with research or training, and of course researching new technology. Researching technology allows you to unlock weapons, items and armour. It's also where you can recruit a batch of heroes if you're running low on troops, and it's the tab where you build the few buildings that are available. 
There isn't much there in terms of choice when it comes to new weapons and armor. There are a couple of interesting items that you can research once a certain number of enemies have, have been defeated. These items tend to share a certain trait that relate to the monster it requires, such as the bone shell armor that covers your soldier in a protective shell after one hit, similar to the bulwark monster. Ruling your nation also comes with choices. These come in the form of text-based events that usually have a negative ending. These events don't ever really have a dramatic effect on the other parts of the game, save occasionally getting a soldier killed. It's cheap, and to be honest, wearisome, it's a very poor way to make the world feel alive, it doesn't really do the illusion particularly well, and it feels very tacked on. The UI in the overworld parts of the game look and respond like touchscreen ports. The UI is overly large, bulky, and provides no feedback upon clicking it. It's almost as if the overworld UI design was made with the thought of a mobile release in mind, and to be honest, this would not be very surprising. It does, however, leave a negative impact on the game. It stands out as not being the correct UI for a PC, and the size of the menus is a perfect size for a touchscreen, but not for a 1080p monitor with a mouse and keyboard. Massive Chalice's combat is modelled from similar games like XCOM. The game does not really do anything unique or particularly innovative with the combat, but it is a solid tried and tested system that works well. There are a variety of factors in battle that you must think about, which usually come from the combination of monster mechanics and the variety of armour and weapon effects. Sadly, there is not a large amount of variety in the terms of the enemies in the game. Each enemy does have a unique mechanic tied to it, such as wrinklers who will add age to your character if they successfully hit, or lapses who if they hit you will drain you of XP, which can lower your character's level mid-battle, which will essentially cause you to lose abilities. The problem with the enemies rears its head later on in the game, when you're just facing the same enemies over and over and the game just throws ever increasing numbers of the same thing at you to try and make the battles more difficult. Games like XCOM not only had turn-based combat, but they also incorporated things like cover and destructible environments into their combat. Massive Chalice does have line of sight, but it lacks anything that could make combat more fun and less boring. It's shallow, the whole combat lacks any depth to it, from enemies to abilities, and this produces a very repetitive system that becomes boorish to play. One major positive point of the game lies in the game's classes. There are three basic classes, Caberjack, Alchemist and Hunter which by themselves would become stale. However, the whole bloodlines mechanics comes into play here. By building a castle on a region, you must appoint a person to rule that land, as well as a spouse to continue their bloodline. By having two different classes, they will have children that will create new classes, such as Shadowjack, which is a combination of Caberjack and Hunter. It's a pretty fun idea, but it's not nearly expanded on enough. The idea of legacy in the game is a good one, but not only by passing down traits, but you can also pass down special weapons known as relics, which get more and more powerful as the time continues, but again, it's not expanded upon enough. The game's levels are tremendously dull. It's a game that could have done with some really interesting level design. Level specific mechanics such as traps or much more interactable environments like the Blackguard series has could have done wonders for the game. Just to simply make the whole thing more interesting. Instead, each level is a square map that looks very similar to the last and essentially its only aesthetic is based upon which region you're fighting in. The game is in my opinion a frustration simulator by design. The game's mechanics by themselves are easily bearable and sometimes good ideas, but combined together they make the game really irritating. The way the time passes so quickly, mixed with the way the enemies take XP and add age, it just takes away from the experience. There's no real payoff in investing in specific characters, and while the bloodlines do offer something interesting, it's not expanded upon enough, it's just very shallow, there's no depth to it, there's nothing to really dig your teeth into. 
it's a shallow hull of a game. The areas where it should have really been fleshed out, it has just been left. And it lacks the draw and longevity of its competitors. And it easily becomes repetitive and the game just flatlines not even halfway through. The difficulty curve in the combat is easily overcome and due to the lack of enemy variety it means that it never starts up again. So once you've basically got your tactics down and a really good squad down you're set for the next 300 years. The game just is a characterless husk. It works sufficiently well in terms of stability but it gives no immersive experience. Double Fine tries to put in the charm with the voice acting of the magical chalice but it fails to charm and instead only serves to annoy and make you cringe. Massive Chalice is light on its content, which was surprising when you think you span 300 years. It simply does not stand up to games like XCOM. It has promised, you know, it, it's got promising ideas, but they're just not explored properly, which are also spoilt by conservative combat design and a garish aesthetic. It's certainly not something I would play again, and people looking for an XCOM-like experience should just instead go play XCOM. It's a sad, deflated disappointment from Double Fine, who once again have turned a promising idea into a mind-numbing drudgery. And that's my review of Massive Chalice. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Do like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you do like my work and would like to see more of it, please consider going over to the Patreon page and making a small donation there. And I will see you, of course, next time.